Oh, do I have an exciting video for you guys today. A few weeks ago, I was invited to an online press event to play a little bit early with some other YouTubers and, of course, press people, Chivalry 2. Whilst I was invited to this and I thoroughly enjoyed it, these opinions are all my own. In this video, I'm going to be giving my initial thoughts about the game, how it compares and where it sits in the landscape of this medieval first-person genre. However, Chivalry 2 haven't told me what I can and can't say, so everything you hear is going to be my my honest opinion. So without further ado, let's talk about Chivalry 2. It's no secret that initially, like many people, I was skeptical when this was announced. This was around the time that Maud Howe was coming out, and then a few weeks before its release, we got a Chivalry 2 trailer. Of course, looking back at it now, there's no way that could have been planned, since games take years to build upon, and it probably would have been in its pre-planning stage five, six years before any sort of trailer really ever came out. But my thoughts were, look, we've got Maud Howe now, it's fantastic, everybody's loving it, so why do we need Chivalry 2? I'm sure a lot of you guys were thinking that at the time and from the responses I know many of you agreed with me but boy were we wrong first off the game looks gorgeous it brings back that gory graphic style that is so famous in this genre the medieval first person sword fighting game needs to have this it's just sort of a staple that goes along with it having gory graphics gory battles chopping off limbs arms legs heads and boy is it a lot of fun the maps also look amazing you can tell the amount of work that's been put into making these incredibly authentic to the gameplay experience. They really accentuate everything that Chivalry 2 is trying to do. And I'll get onto a little bit later where it sits alongside Mordhau and whether they clash or they fit quite well together. But the maps are a huge part of this. It proves the way they're going. The maps are so big. I mean, the one that you see in the gameplay, you start outside a city, fighting around the battering rams and the siege towers. You then have to breach the walls and fight on top of the walls once you climb up ladders, trying not to get knocked off and open the gates so you can get more people through. You then get down from the walls and fight around the camp area trying to avoid all the open fires because yes they will set you on fire while enemies are pouring out of tents trying to stop you from moving up once you've got through there you go through the second gate and you're now fighting in a town with houses and buildings you can go inside with blacksmiths with things to pick up all around to chuck at your enemies and the town is absolutely massive once you've got through that part it's time to breach the inner keep trying to fight onto another set of walls with ballistas firing down upon you with arrows swishing past your head once you get up there, you're then fighting in the courtyard of the keep around the hangman's noose, trying to gain the territory here. And finally, once you do that, you break into the main keep and you have to assassinate the heir. The player on the defending team who got the most kills in the last round then becomes this massive hulking guy that needs to be defended by his team because if he's killed, the match ends. I actually got to play as that because, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but as you can see in some of the gameplay and what will come in some live commentary videos, I didn't do too shabby myself. But these maps are absolutely humongous. These big linear front line modes go on for so long and it's so much fun. But the core of these games is the combat. So what's it like? I think the combat has some great additions. You can now jab your weapon to stun players, strafe from side to side. Of course you have the usual kicking and slashing and stabbing with dragging and speeding up attacks depending on where you move your mouse. However, for some reason the attack direction when you're slashing isn't actually dependent on your mouse movement. What I mean by this is if your mouse slashes from the right, it will slash from the right. But if your mouse slashes from the left, it doesn't slash from the left. The only way you can get it to change the direction of the slash is once you do your first attack, you then attack again to enter a combo mode where it then slashes from the other side. Or you can hold Alt to do an alternate attack, which attacks from a different angle, which I find a little bit weird. I don't really agree with that decision, but most of the combat is done pretty well. It isn't anything special, but I don't really think that's its selling point. It's good enough for what it is, and I really enjoy playing with it. Depending on how you've played Mordhau, I think it's kind of similar in some ways. If you're good at dragging and speeding up attacks in that game, you'll probably find it are much more easier in this one. However, I think the combat really focuses much more on its casual side rather than getting some really intense duels out there. But I think that's really advantageous to what this game is trying to do. But what is Chivalry 2's selling point? Well, as I mentioned, it's casual game modes. This is the most casually fun arcade game ever. 
And boy, am I so happy that they've gone that way. You can pick up pretty much everything on the battle map. Someone literally shot a ballista bolt in me. I took it out and I proceeded to run around the battlefield with it raised in the air, screaming at the enemy, and I eventually threw it in someone else's leg. Someone came at me with a wagon wheel. They threw it at my head. I then picked up a barrel and threw it back at someone else. Someone was holding a chicken during the event that they were throwing at people. You can even chop off people's heads and then pick their heads up and throw them at other enemies. Yes, I did do that to Pixelated Apollo. It was a lot of fun and pretty much every single item you can find lying around doesn't matter what it is you could probably pick it up and throw it at someone or use it as a weapon furthermore every single weapon within the game can be thrown at the enemy not like Maud how where you have an alternate mode on some weapons so the one-handed stuff can sometimes be thrown or the javelins of course can be used to stab and then thrown in chivalry 2 every single weapon and I mean literally every weapon can be thrown at your enemy doesn't matter if it's a small dagger a one-handed sword or a massive hauling axe you can chuck it at them and boy is it a lot of fun this game focuses so much on enjoyment rather than trying to make the most in-depth and intense fighting experience it just wants you to have fun and it does that brilliantly you can even whack people with your bow if you run out of ammo and just start slashing at them with the wooden end of it i could not get enough of this i have never laughed so much playing a game and i felt like i was a little bit crazy because i was talking to myself at that point each class has its own ability as well. For example, the archer has a brazier they can put down, a little metal casket with some burning coals in it that you can then put down in front of you, put your arrow in, and start firing flaming arrows. One class has a horn that can heal nearby allies. One class has wooden spikes that can be placed down in front of you to stop enemies and put up some defensive positions, and there's so many more different abilities for each class. So how does it hold up alongside Mordhau? I think that will be the question that most people will be asking, and I couldn't be happy with the direction it's going. You see, the thing I was worried about was it will be trying to do the same thing. You look at both these games with the first person combat style medieval night games and they look very similar. You think that they're trying to go in the same direction they end up clashing. Then you have to pick, oh, should I play Maud How or should I play Chivalry 2? But actually playing them, these games couldn't be further apart and I think that works brilliantly. They are completely different games in terms of gameplay style and feel and they have their own unique place meaning that they work so well beside each other. Other. You'll get something from Mordhau, and then you'll go and play Chivalry 2 and get something completely different. There's almost no comparison between the two in terms of the actual experience you're going to have. Chivalry 2 focuses much more on a bigger scale. You're going to have these massive battles with siege weaponry and so many players on each side of the battlefield. It is more casual, but I'm not saying that in a negative way. That has to be one of its best choices. Placing down arch braziers to then put your arrows in it to set them alight is not historically accurate, but boy is it funny when you place one down in front of you, set your arrow light, ping it off into the distance, and you then see an enemy running across the battlefield, screaming on fire. Chopping off someone's head and then picking it back up and throwing it into the crowd isn't necessarily something that would happen on the battlefield, but you're gonna do it because it's so much fun. I have to say, this was, and I'm not saying this lightly, this was 100% one of the funnest experiences I've ever had playing a multiplayer game. Is it the most historically accurate? No, of course not, but who cares? Does Maud help bring more flowing combat with more intricate details and a little bit more intense gameplay? Yeah, but it doesn't have the same scale and it doesn't have those fun moments in the same way. Every now and then in Maud Hell you'll get some funny kills or you'll get some incredible team kills with a catapult and it's really fun in those moments but that is constant in Chivalry 2. I mean in the couple of hours I was playing, let's just have a look at some of the absolute insane moments that I had. This is from an upcoming live commentary video that I have coming soon so make sure you stick around the channel to see more of that in the future. Hello. Whoa. <laughs> Throw the pot. <laughs> oh, I kicked him. Oil pot time. <laughs> the bows. He's got a chicken. He's got a chicken. He's got a chicken. Look at my body. Look at me up there. How sad is that? Hello. I cannot state enough how well Torn Banner have done with this. I mean, they had a bit of a misstep with Mirage Arcane Warfare, and I think the doubts really spread into Chivalry 2. I'm sure a lot of people watching this will still probably be doubting, thinking he doesn't know what he's talking about, oh, he's just shilling for this game, but as I mentioned, I don't have to say anything that I don't want to. I don't have to praise it, and I can absolutely criticise this game. And I think the places that criticism will come is the longevity, whether they can make this game last for time, because we did see that with Mordhau. It didn't have enough content to keep people coming back and back 
back again. And I think Chivalry 2 could go the same way. But in terms of my first impressions of playing it, I don't think I could have had more fun. And I can't wait to play this with you guys. When people can start coming on in these public servers, oh my word, it is going to be amazing. I'm going to be bringing out so much more gameplay because we've got another closed beta coming soon that I've been able to get into. And there's absolutely no NDA anymore. All the embargoes have dropped. So I'm going to be bringing you all the stuff I can. So please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Chivalry 2 stuff. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. But until then, I will see you in the next one.